Again, my name is Keith Brown. I'm a Lickian Center at Arizona State University, and we're delighted to be hosting uh, Slajana Lucic, director of Little Star Rising and a Humphrey Fellow at the Cronkite School this year. Uh, so most of the folks here, I hope, have been able to see the film. I'm just going to kick us off, kick off with a question uh, to give Slajana a chance to sort of give us the background. Um, I have a few questions, but I'm, I, I want this to, I want to feature everyone's questions. We have about an hour and a half with uh, Slajana. So please uh, use the chat um, to flag that you have a question. Um, I'll ask David, we'll probably keep, try and keep most people muted um, so that we're not talking across each other when we're not speaking. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and ask, uh, I had a question for both Slajana and Njema to kick us off, but Slajana, maybe you can take this. So when did you decide to, that there was a film here? Uh, and, and, and how did you meet Njema? I'm guessing it was because you were both working at Al Jazeera, but was there an aha moment when the two of you realized, yeah, this is a film? Well, yes, we, we met at work. We are both in a newsroom with Al Jazeera, Balkans and Sarajevo. And uh, as you know, uh, in the film, she was at that time a proofreader. And we, um, there was like a daily uh, talk, a business talk about what needs to uh, be, uh, uh, what she needs to go over in the stories. And um, nothing suggested that she will be a, a protagonist of uh, my documentary film and that I will make a documentary film at that point. So the, the change happened within Junujema life. She, uh, as the, you saw, joined the running school. She needed some change. She was looking for, uh, for herself, for her identity in a way. And that change was uh, so bright in a way that it, uh, uh, was, it, it, it was shown in uh, her appearance, in the way she dressed, in her energy. Uh, and she started motivating people uh, that nobody else in our newsroom could. And it was funny because we had like many sports journalists who were active sportsmen, you know, at that time. But uh, uh, she was like, somebody who was a recreational runner decided to become a triathlon and didn't know how to swim uh, somehow was able to motivate many people to to join or to uh, i don't know connect to something they lost and wanted to try again because they forgot it in some part of their life so at that yes i had an aha moment and i thought of making documentaries long long time ago but never did uh, always find the different excuses, as many of us do in life. And I asked her, and when she said yes, I could not go back. You know, she said yes, she was also already preparing for triathlon, so I needed to dive in, and uh, we started filming immediately. And, and one of the questions I had as, for you as a filmmaker was, um, just the, the, the challenge of telling a story like this in a way that works both for the audiences who know a lot of the backstory already um, and for audiences outside Bosnia-Herzegovina who don't know as much. And I was struck in particular by the way you crafted the introduction to Najema's stepfather, um, uh, who we met first as a as a stepfather on a bicycle in this very kind of human engaged way. And then you built in this coverage uh, of his form, the way that he had been profiled previously. So can you, can you talk a little bit about how you managed that and how the two of you discussed, you know, which parts of the story you could rely on the audience knowing and which parts you had to fill out, especially for an international audience? Oh, yes. Uh, well, I must first say that my uh, film was never about um, explaining the war that happened in Yugoslavia or in Bosnia and Herzegovina or to explain the political situation of Bosnia and Herzegovina at this point. But yes, of course, that I'm portraying that uh, through uh, the character of Nujema because I was trying to show a person uh, who, is, uh, who had struggles in her life, tragedies, 
and uh, war was part of that and uh, society today is part of her uh, her everyday life and uh, many people who don't disagree with, uh, with the way she uh, lives her life so uh, what we we decided is um, i want wanted to show the audience who she is so my main story in every documentary film you have like a main story and my main story is about uh, a covered woman trying to become a triathlon uh, uh, or iron woman uh, and uh, is not uh, is, at this point she's not uh, even doesn't know how to swim and there are the layers the back stories you know about tragedies that happened to her the losses the atrocity of war uh, society today very uh, in a way conservative or um, a grudge against one another who is a bit different Nujema, who is uh, between her family and her own decisions. Uh, and uh, uh, I cannot tell that while I was filming, I had any idea how I will like show that in, in a good way, in a good storytelling way. But I was very lucky to have, um, um, the, there was six of us doing this movie. The, uh, and the one of them was the editor, Anna Stulina. And uh, when I, when she really helped develop this story so that you have that main story and different layers of the story when you can emotionally, emotionally engage and know Nujema more. She's not perfect. She was just trying to figure out uh, what to do. And by being so authentic, she uh, influenced many because uh, she wasn't trying to, to do it. It was just her way. And the, the people gather around, just pick up on that, uh, that energy, on that vibe. So uh, it, it was so funny because as a journalist, uh, you are used to the deadlines. So if you ask me like in 2017, when we started filming, I thought it will take me at least, uh, like most in year, never, not more than a year. It took two years. It took me like six months of editing to get this story. So what uh, Charlotte and Carla mentioned before, and Irena, who helped me, my friend from uh, my family, not my friend, uh, 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 was that we uh, figure out how to tell a story in a six months period of editing. And it still wasn't enough. I mean, I would do some things differently, but yes, um, it was a process and a good choice of uh, uh, team members. So I wasn't a professional who knew documentarism. I had a story, I had a journalistic background and I had a great relationship with the team I worked on. So the cinematographer and editor and producer, uh, they gave me uh, uh, the things or the skills that I lacked of. And that's why we produced what we did. So yeah, I see Catherine asked the question, what year do you decided to make the film? But you just said 2017 was when you started. Yes, we started yeah. in 2017 and uh, through a year and a year and a half, uh, we filmed not all the time, but that was the process. And the editing was done in Zagreb because I were really, really in Croatia because I really wanted to work with uh, Anna Stulina. And it, as I said, it took six months. And you know, same, uh, I didn't know how it goes. I thought it will take me a month. I was really good prepared with all the notes and everything. And I make a joke out of me, you know, because never the documentaries do that like detailed uh, transcripts of everything she, she filmed. And there was like a lot of material, but I did it all. It helped, uh, but at maybe two months uh, of editing, I said to my producer and Anna Stulina that I don't know what to do. I don't see the film. It's not like there. And they started laughing and tell me, told me, yeah, we are now sure that you will finish it. You need to just like admit that you have no idea what are you doing, take a step back and then process it further. So uh, it really helped. But I was like, uh, at that point, I thought I don't have a movie. So we've got a, um, so I'm, I'm, I have a question related to that. It's one of the things about editing. It, it feels like the sculpture moment, right? You're chipping away at what you have to see what the shape is. So I'll come back to that. I have a question 
in the chat from Zlata Filipovic. Zlata, do you want to ask it yourself? Unmute and ask. What? It took time. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I showed that movie to my students in BCS class. And uh, I can tell you, um, no one actually mentioned anything about war. Uh, it could be different reasons. Uh, but uh, the, the way they understood some of them who are familiar with the Balkan, they see uh, Nujema as a, as a, Balkan, a, a woman from Balkan. It's not just Muslim or Orthodox or Catholic, it's a woman on Balkan trying to do the things that are right for her and for others. Actually, it's not just for her. She, she helped the whole group of people. So women in the Balkan lives pretty conservative way. We can try many things, but we are still inside pretty conservative. Um, and uh, what, what do you think, Slajana? Is it something related to all women in general? Well, yes, I, th I think it's always, uh, maybe it's harder. Um, I, I can say from my point of view, you know, um, my father has two daughters, I have an older sister, and uh, I always say he was the first feminist I ever met. I mean, he didn't want to be that, he's like very traditional man in a way, but uh, in the Balkans, you know, if you have a son, it's usually like, oh, you have a son, and it, I mean, in early days, uh, especially, and he had two daughters, and I never knew uh, if he thought like that when I was like uh, uh, one, but uh, he, had a, he had a car uh, body shop, you know, paint shop, and I worked in his uh, uh, shop, so uh, uh, or he told me that I can do whatever I want if I'm very persistent and if I work hard. And uh, my obstacles, like idea that I'm a woman and there is something that I should or shouldn't do, came after uh, afterwards in my life. So yes, it depends um, how you grow up. And mostly, like Zlata said, it's it's it can be conservative. It's changing. Like now in newsrooms, in a, even in my newsroom, they're mostly women. Uh, my uh, 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 director of program is woman. So it's a great achievement now, but there's still a lot, a lot of work to uh, be done. We had movements here, same like in the uh, Western Balkans, Me Too movement, but something similar with the uh, uh, problems of sexual harassment. How do women um, are perceived or taken advantage of. And so, yeah, a lot, lot of things still need to be, uh, to, to improve in societies and our societies in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia and the Balkans region. Yes, a lot. Uh, Charlotte has a uh, question. Uh, Charlotte, do you want to go ahead and unmute and ask it? Okay. Um, yeah, I had a comment. One thing is that something we all have in common that I would think would engender a great deal of empathy for the film is that we're women. And I think no matter what country you're in or what you live, what circumstances you live under, that you're a woman. So already you're dealing with that. I mean, I personally have not had to fight that battle so much and yet I know it exists. But my question is, did you have cooperation from the people who were involved? Like, like other people besides uh, Najima and, and your crew and all that. I mean, the people that you interacted with. Oh, I must say we did. What we had um, trouble, and you see I use social media because it's a part of Najima life. But it's also uh, where the antagonists are in my story or the people who uh, don't agree with her way of life. Uh, the one of the reasons why I chose it is uh, because all the people that we uh, contacted uh, and uh, who were against her way of living uh, didn't want to participate and to be filmed for a movie. Um, yeah. 
that's what I meant. That 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 was uh, hard. We tried in a local mosque uh, that was uh, 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 who to where where they talked about her, and there was one particular uh, person who was very uh, active on social network, and he he's very educated uh, person, but a very uh, conservative. That if I maybe that's too benign word but yes <laughs> uh, and uh, I uh, tried to co I contact him he said no and then he posted uh, on a Facebook uh, a post that uh, one person like a journalist contact him want to make a story that's totally wrong about Nujema and he put my phone number uh, mobile phone number without the first three digits of of the mobile operator, but there are only three of mobile operators in Bosnia, so you know you can <laughs> really find it. Uh, so what happened uh, beneath that post? You could see all the hate speech, you know, uh, very harsh hate speech. Uh, we reported it to police. Uh, I didn't have any uh, um, issues with that, but uh, you know, I just had negative negative. Uh, feedback like that nobody approached me or did what they said like I'll, I'll find you I'll kill you and all other things that they're very aggressive in the way of talk and because I'm a journalist it's not something that happened for the first time and then yeah. you can just imagine what was what was happening to Nujema yeah so thank you uh, yeah that that that's the main reason and uh, um uh uh, I'm, uh, I, I saw uh, Dr. Kraft, uh, John Kraft, I'm in his documentary production class and we, that's something important because we talk with the students about importance of uh, telling the story and for me it was very important to tell the story from the other side that uh, the people who don't agree with her, so we find a way to introduce it through the social networks. So, so uh, thanks for calling out uh, John Kraft and thank you for joining us, Professor Kraft. Um, so there's a, a couple of comments in the, in the, in the chat, um, appreciating um, aspects of, um, well, so first of all, appreciating that Najema was, was clear about being a covered woman, but the film is not about Perda, it's not about Islam, it's not about oppression in that sense. And then a couple of questions, which, which sort of I, I'll, I'll sort of join because I had the same question. Um, Najema herself responds very, um, you know, she doesn't just let that um, negative pushback on social media sit there unchallenged. She actually pushes back quite vocally and powerfully against it. Um, as someone who's been a target of very much less uh, of that kind of uh, behavior, but some, I'm sort of, I'm curious how she decided that that was the best response. I mean, I th it's very courageous and especially as you're saying, so you haven't seen a follow through on you, having your phone number posted, but I can imagine that Jamer is a very, uh, very publicly uh, proud, uh, you know, unashamed of what she's doing. I'm, I'm, has she never worried about a crossover from violent speech on social media to uh, real life um, pushback? Yes, I, I'm sure she thought about that. You, you cannot not think about it. Uh, and in one um, sentence, she mentioned that she talked to a psychiatrist uh, about the things of the negative stuff that was uh, going on. Uh, she really decided to do that. It, that was very uh, uh, mature decision because there was a lot of negative things. Uh, uh, and, you know, when she was in Banja Luka and she was running and I was there, my, uh, my husband was there filming her uh, and uh, the crew and um, the people reaction of Vanya Luka was great. They, the ones that came there was there to support uh, the uh, runners. Uh, and what happened afterwards, that backlash that happened on the social media is, uh, uh, is, is what we all have in now day life, you know, regardless of a state and uh, the, the the dilemma or the politic or whatever is going on. So for Nujema, it, 
it was like a way of life. It's just it was just happening so uh, every day uh, for a long period of time, and she decided to tackle it, you know, to talk about it and to uh, react. And I think she cannot do it differently because of her character. It's what we talked about, Inat, we call it in a way. You, you're you just stubborn. Uh, maybe you're, I don't know if it's rational or reasonable to do, uh, but it's, it goes with her character. It, I cannot imagine her being different. And that's something that they also um, found it uh, inappropriate, like because she's a woman, a covered woman, how she can use that language, you know, be so open and uh, say so many negative things uh, in, in their way of thinking. And uh, uh, I wanted to portray that because she is a human being. You cannot uh, be encountered with all those comments and harsh words and say nothing. Uh, it affects you and infected her, infected her family also. So I think she thought about it, yes, but uh, uh, I'm very, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm so uh, not lucky, but I'm uh, feeling good that it never uh, uh, went through viral to everyday life that she was uh, attacked. So, uh, and hopefully it won't happen. So just uh, want to go back to Kevin Jono's question. It, did that? Did I? Did did we address your question, or were you asking more about the screening, the the impact of the film? Um, I was more uh, focused on during the production of the film. Were you ever met with people trying to shut it down, um, having you quit? Uh, because obviously um, it, it's a controversial film for some people. So how did you deal with that aspect? Well, thank you for the question. Um, well, during the uh, making the filming, I must say we were um, uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina and those people who are documentaries will know you need all different license from people who will give you the statements where you're filming. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's much easier. <laughs> I, I got all the, I mean, I was a field, field, uh, field producer also. So we, we did all, all of to get together. And I didn't encounter with many uh, uh, problems on, on the field. The reason is when you are among the runners, they are very positive. I didn't, you know, they will have been from different countries, different continents uh, in like Belgrade, and they will like, like, like make jokes, uh, create a good vibe and run. So I didn't have any problems. Even when we went to Bocinje, uh, where there is still a division, there, is a, uh, there are still Muslim and Serbs now living uh, in, in the same village uh, uh, today. Uh, I didn't encounter uh, any, any problems. So for, um, yeah, and it usually is in life, you know, the people uh, who are so aggressive uh, won't tell you that in person or won't, you know, encounter you in person. They will just do it from their chairs in a, in a virtual world. So, uh, and they will gossip. Uh, but d during the filming and our process of filming, I didn't encounter, um, problems with not being able to film or people uh, saying like, no, you cannot be here. I, I'm, I'm like, I exhausted them, you know, through talking. So they, they let me film. <laughs> so I, um, just picking up on something you asked, and again, please, um, it, you, if you just want to put in the, chat, I have a question, then I'll call on you, um, or you can type your question either way, but ha happy to have this many voices here as we can. Uh, but in the meantime, um, so uh, it, going back to that question about the editing process and finding the story, it's a question I didn't actually share with you before, but what was the, um, what was the scene you had to let go of 
that you had the hardest time letting go of because it didn't fit in the film? In other words, what's the what's the piece you miss most that you couldn't fit into this narrative? Oh, many. <laughs> I had a lot of them that I had to uh, take them out. Uh, but it may be about the group because of the group that she uh, created. There are so many great moments uh, of them together, but I needed to uh, let them go. Also, also there was a, a piece when I portrayed uh, Nuji in a you know very sensitive female uh, uh, way when she was like taking her makeup, uh, uh, preparing for one um, uh, event. And it was very um, intimate and I really liked it. And we uh, uh, spent a lot of time <laughs> filming it, uh, but at the end, it really didn't, uh, uh, in, didn't tell the story in a way, it, it interrupted my story and my uh, tempo that we uh, had to uh, let it go and it wasn't uh, that important uh, uh, for a story because again you need to be focused on what story you are telling and not to be like all over the place so that audience when you see a movie you cannot connect because there are so many things I wanted to tell you and there is there is no flow at, at that point so that that's something that yeah there are many many scenes we put it like not all but Anna and I put a lot of them so we will just like feel good because we <laughs> edit them and then we took them out so related to that question um uh it's uh, Claire Kovi uh, do you want to ask the question I'm not sure what your full name is but you go yeah ahead. I'm Carolina hi I'm so hi. sorry <laughs> I could not change my name there <laughs> Slajana this is a wonderful wonderful movie really I I saw it and I can relate to that because I'm from from Croatia so I have a question that I would pose to any actually to any documentary filmmaker and that is when you have a a film of uh, with such a, a kind of a, a strong character or protagonist uh, as Nujema is. Uh, how much is it your story? Uh, and how much is it the story that Nujema would like to be told of herself? How do you deal with that? Yeah, that's a good story. A uh, good question. Uh, uh, yes, because Nujema is a very strong character and uh, you want to portray her um, in a way that it's not like a PR story of Nujema because that that's not and that strong character impose uh, herself uh, in a story uh, uh, by just who he or she is. And uh, what we did was I, that's why I wanted to have those layers of her identities and uh, who she is and her father and her stepfather and their relationship and uh, how she talk and interacts with other. I mean, she, she is not a perfect human being. She is like all of us. So I, I was very careful. I mean, we are not best, we, we, we were so, um, uh, we, we spent so much time together but even now we are not best friends. You cannot involve with your character to become uh, so close, but we uh, gained such a mutual respect for each other because uh, I think it's important and a trust. Uh, when, we, uh, when I approach her for the first time, I ask her, I'm interested in uh, doing a movie about her, but that, that, what that means that she cannot, um, decide uh, in a way that only the good things and the things that I want to film that she, she will say, no, I don't want this to be in, in, in your movie. And uh, we needed to agree that I will have access to different situations uh, and uh, to uh, uh, film them and to ask her questions about that. So I think it's very important at the beginning to be honest with your character, with your protagonist. Uh, that you will not be here just for easy questions and uh, they will need to open up and you will you have to show different aspects and layers of them 
uh, and I hope I, I did that uh, in a way. But uh, my story from the beginning wasn't a negative one. So I, I had an um, easier way as a documentaries. Uh, uh, but uh, I mean, she wasn't a negative uh, protagonist at, at that point. But that's why I wanted again to show that there is a different side of Nujema on the social networks, the way she talks, uh, the way she uh, interacts, you know, with the antagonist. She wasn't like a perfect little uh, little girl. Uh, she was like uh, a woman uh, trying to uh, to live the life the way she wanted, or, or better to say, at that point, to find out what she wants. So this is Keith. I just want to follow up on that because uh, it links to a question that I had asked. So, um, I, I hear. So I'm curious about the balance between, as you said, you know, you, you wanted access to be able to film everything or as much as you wanted and she couldn't say, no, stop filming now. Um, and, and obviously that you would, it was a story that you were looking to tell. But I also noticed there are places where I felt like it wasn't, we weren't just watching something observed. We were watching things that the film needed um, or that, were happening because of the film and I'm thinking especially the visit back to the Serbian owner of the house where she grew up in. Uh, so yeah. can you talk a little bit about, I mean it seems like she was very willing to talk with you and and do things outside her running schedule that 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 worked for the story. Could you but talk a little bit about how you negotiated that with her and others? Yes, for the Bocinje, you know, uh, we, uh, it was uh, something that through the interviews came up because she mentioned that uh, once she left that place, she never went again. And uh, uh, I thought it was very important to uh, tell the story about stepfather and uh, to use the archives to explain who he was um, uh, through the media who covered that story uh, or through all these years and to find something um, from the 90s uh, uh, that can explain who he was at that point, where, where he was. Uh, and uh, I, I thought it would be a good idea to see Bocinje, uh, to go with Nujema. And I said that it would be a, a, a very important for the film uh, and for the explanation where she was to go there. So we didn't have any... Mm, I don't want to do that. I didn't want to do that in my film. I didn't call that guy and uh, arrange a, a talk, a visit. We just decided to go to Bocinje to see what will happen. Is there a house still there? Um, what she will remember? Will people remember her? So it was just a decision to go and see and that uh, she shows us uh, a, a village and uh, connect with the, with the time when she was living there. And when we came, uh, we asked the uh, people, uh, the uh, locals, and they told us that the, uh, that person, the owner of that house where she was uh, living uh, uh, was in the village. And then we approached him and what you saw was their introduction and he was willing to talk. So in a way we were lucky uh, I didn't want to arrange it, like, uh, uh, to call him, and I think it, it was important to have it at, uh, authentic at, at, at as much as you can have it, uh, because we did, uh, we, when we encountered him, we uh, filmed it, and I said we would like to film it, so he knew, uh, and he said he want, wanted to. So it was, at the end, very important for him and for Nujema, too, because it was reconciliation for both of them of the life they had prior and what he said what he told her that it was it was past uh, that house was a part of of uh, of uh, history and of of, of of her daughter his daughter and Nujema so of their growing up uh, and for me it summons up what in a way happen and what should happen in the present, that idea of uh, reconciliation, admitting what happened, uh, trying to live a life of their fullest. So uh, I think it was very important to show it. Uh, not, you cannot go apart from 
if you're portraying Nujema, you cannot go apart from the state or the social social uh, part of political life of uh, what we have now. Uh, but I just wanted to show it how it implements a regular person like Nujema. It's it, you know. Uh, it really affects uh, our life, all our lives in different states. So I've got a, a few questions back in the chat now. I have a question from uh, John Meisner, the um, curator of the Humphrey program. He asked, um, just thinking about your conversation about the team you led and working with, with uh, sort of making decisions about how to incorporate important uh, dimensions of the story. He asked what leadership lessons you learned uh, putting this project together. <laughs> Professor Meisner, it's always about leadership. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Meisner. So yes, for me, um, I never thought it as a leadership uh, at that point when you do it, like a leadership uh, part, but uh, it was important. Um, I was the leader in on the idea uh, or that film should be made made and I uh, what Professor Meisner would said sold that idea to my team and it was very important they uh, they connected with me and they saw uh, the same reasons why to film it uh, that we can be we should be what we want to be it, it, to grow up our identities the way we want so uh, that's how I chose a team. I chose a team that I know, knew I could connect with and that um, all bring their special skills inside. So I was good at the idea what the story should be. Vieran Hrbka, my cinematographer, uh, was like really visual guy with, uh, who was thinking about story and the visual part of it. And... Uh, uh, Anna was, you know, getting, she wasn't involved in the first part of our process. So uh, she was um, uh, uh, once from a, a more objective point of view and she was the out, outsider. So she, uh, that position helped a lot. She wasn't connected to, to the material in the same way. So what I uh, learned uh, is for the next time uh, that uh, I would do the same, I would pick up the same idea of the way of the, uh, picking up the team the, to have that connection, but I would be a better leader even uh, uh, for sure now because I know more about documentary film uh, than I did before. Uh, so they were very supportive when I got lost in the process <laughs> and they picked me up and they gave me that strength to finish it. And that was um, uh, part of what we learned at, uh, as a Humphrey Fellows uh, about that leadership role, that it's not about being um, or presenting to be strong. It's about even share that a uh, vulnerable side and saying, I really don't know how to uh, go further. And uh, my husband encountered that, you know, I would call him from Zagreb coming back to Sarajevo. And once I was crying and I was telling him, I, I won't be finishing this. It's not looking good. And he was like telling me, okay, just come home. And, you know, uh, afterwards he would tomorrow ask me and I said, well, I'm just, of course I will finish it. You know, I was, just, I was just having a meltdown at that point. So they all helped. It was a small team, uh, did more than usual team, a professional team would do. Uh, so it was very important to have their backing me up. And that's why we, uh, same with the crowdfunding and with uh, Charlotte and Carla, Irena, with all the people that uh, helped me, Alana uh, from uh, uh, Windsor in Canada. So, um, we connected on uh, on the story and see now we're uh, uh, talking in phoenix uh, uh, about something produced in bosnia and herzegovina because it's universal uh so uh, another question from uh kevin jono i mean we've talked a little bit about najema's um 
determination and resolve as an individual. Was, was, was there ever a moment just as you were on the phone with your husband uh, having doubts? Uh, did you ever, did she ever encounter any doubts along the way? Uh, well, she did uh, regarding her swimming. Uh, and I, she wasn't, you know, she would say that she has no fear, like in a movie when she was like at the lake and she said, well, it's not a fear, you know, it's something else. But, uh, and later when the film was finished, I'd show her the film and she said she was watching it for the first time. So uh, she saw the movie when it was finished and she said at that point, at that scene, yeah, right. It's, you know, no fear, right. So uh, she had uh, ideas about talking about past sometimes that she wasn't, um, very, um, how can I say it, at some moments open, but we need to be patient with people in our lives. So it's same in the movie. We need to, to wait for the right uh, time that they open up and share because it's very intimate and it's, it's very scary. Uh, so uh, I think what helped uh, is the, how long the process uh, of the film uh, took. So in a year, year and a half, uh, she was, um, she had trust in us. So we, we, we got her opened up to us. Um, so uh, what have we got now? Um, anyone wanna jump in? Um, David, do you wanna ask your question? Just so, a number of things in the sports world, um, the, the kind of sports and fashion across, you know, all genders, all kinds of things um, have come together. And how has it come together in her life as a, a way of self-expression, choices of what colors do I not use and use and how far can I go and what's me and what's not me and who am I representing and all of those things through my choices between from shoes to headwear you know, and everything in between, literally. You know, it's both of them though, are billion dollar industries and I'm sure she felt pressure from both when she got involved. So, sorry, thanks. Yes, but um, thank you for question. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is very small market and very, you know, small country uh, in comparison to USA. So there are not so uh, many pressures, you know, to, uh, to athletes or I don't know for athletes, but for the recreational uh, runners or people like Nujema, although she, she is uh, well known at this point. Uh, so no, she, I don't think she ever was, um, was uh, approached by like Nike or somebody like that. <laughs> but it would be good for her, I, I think. Uh, uh, no, but what changed uh, in her, uh, did change in her appearance, you know, I must say, when I met her, she was like wearing like very tradition, more traditional, um, very black colors. So as you see in the movie, she's all in different uh, colors uh, that she's, she's wearing. Uh, I must say that, yes, they're connected, as you said, the fashion industry and, and the uh, uh, and the sports and most of people in Bosnia and Herzegovina and Bakan also where you know I have Adidas Nikes and whatever and I ask other people what's uh, in today because I'm, I'm not good at that uh, but just the reason because of the um, uh, the reason of the market that it's not so big I think that's the reason that they're not approachable uh, approached in the same way the big stars like um, Novak Djokovic, uh, the football team, uh, they are. <laughs> uh, others, others so far that I know not in the same way. Uh, so question, so this, um, am I right? Is, are we right, Slojana? This is your so far only documentary that you- Yes, I've done a smaller part, you know, featured for, because I'm for 20 years, I'm a news journalist and news editor, but nothing like a feature length documentary of this type that I've uh, done, uh, done before. So it was my first. So we'll call this your first documentary then. Yes. Um, so um, any other projects of particular interest, including 
perhaps any thought of a, of a sequel or a follow on to this particular story? I wasn't planning so far, although uh, uh, we always joke about that, that we will make like a little Star Rising in the second part. But uh, no, we, we haven't planned it. But I, I do plan to uh, uh, stay in documentary waters, um, thinking about different projects at that, that this point. And also, I don't have a formal education in documentarism. That's something I'm really interested in to, uh, to learn be because of the process. It's much easier if you understand the, the process in academic way, in a, a theoretically way, a theoretical way. So yes, it's something that I really want to pursue. And I uh, sort of linked to that. Um, uh, sorry, just trying to manage the chat. Are you seeing the chat as well? Oh Sonja? yes. Do you yeah. want me to? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. It's fine. I'll I'll, I'll try and uh, keep monitoring it for you. I just don't want to miss anyone. Um, so, uh, Catherine, do you want to j just pose your um, observation about the how you feel like the 1990? This was my question earlier. 1992 is a context that some viewers know very well; other viewers may have forgotten. And I, yes. I understand. We understand your choice of focus and the light touch you have on that period. Um, no, yes, it's, it's, I mean, I understand the question. It's something that we asked ourselves. We were also approached uh, in the project uh, uh, to like, uh, to get funding, to change the story uh, and focus uh, uh, quite heavily on what happened on 1992, uh, or better say in war and what was happening in uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. But I, uh, as, um, as a filmmaker and one who had the story, it wasn't my story. Uh, I, there are many, many important documentaries about this, uh, uh, about the war and uh, what was happening. Uh, and I think it's very important to also know, but it wasn't, it's just that it wasn't the focus of, of, uh, of my movie. Uh, and that was the main reason um, that we didn't like uh, explain it further. But in a real life, you know, when we had festivals and a dialogue, a talk afterward, of course we would talk more and people would like to find out more uh, and they did. Uh, and it, it was nice to, uh, to have that part uh, in, a, in the conversation, but uh, it was just our decision or my decision. Uh, it wasn't my story. And that, that sort of ties to a question that I had asked you before. I mean, it, so you, you sort of said at the beginning, which I love, you said your, st you, your sort of core of your story was uh, a young woman who wants to do compete in Ironman who doesn't know how to swim, right? That's the sort of kernel of the story you began with. Yes, and then there are layers. Right, right. But I, I suggested to you, I mean, one of the things that I took from the film, I, I, I'm, I sort of, I work in Macedonia, so Inat is something that I really have come to um, wrestle with and appreciate uh, how it has a destructive side, <laughs> but, but it also yeah. has, it also can be turned to constructive events. And so my question for you was, if that was the lesson people took, that determination resilience doesn't have to lead to conflict, it can lead to positive outcomes. Would you be happy with that as a, as a message people are taking from the film? Yes, I would. I mean, you, you are so right. Inat, it's, it's a, a, in a way, uh, when I, Marima Klucho, who I'm very grateful for the music, she composed the music. We talked about temperament of, uh, of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the region. And she, she was also talking about how the, you know, tones of the music, of ethnic music, it's high tones or low tones. There is no middle usually. So it's with the character, uh, it, how it goes. So uh, it depends how you use it to build or to destruct. Uh, this film is uh, 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 the way we can uh, show what we can be. And if we are like, have that in it, but trying it to uh, to put it in a uh, in something positive for us and for others, and so Nujema and I shared uh, share it. Uh, it's 
it's just that we decided and I hopefully many people uh, will feel the same uh, to use it to do some good uh, for us but for the others and uh, uh, Balkans uh, unfortunately is very well known for great hospitality uh, great people but so many uh, difficult parts of uh, in its history uh, that goes together with Inak, yes, in a in different way that you mentioned. And Zlata, do you want to uh, ask your earlier question or or a, or a revision of it? Yeah, I will. Uh, so the other people can can ask a better question. But my question is, what do you think, Zlata? How much this movie, this idea, will change us on Balkan? I'm not there, but I'm uh -huh. with my heart there. <laughs> oh, I don't expect, you know, my film will make like a, the, a big change, but same like with Gemma, you know, she started running. What she did there, she started running and that, that's it. And then whole different changes and uh, small miracles happened. So I think on everybody uh, um, path, uh, uh, something that, that like that can be achieved. Uh, for me, uh, I, I was, when I was in, in festi festival talking with people in, uh, I don't know, in Windsor, in, uh, in, Mon in Montenegro or in uh, North Macedonia, um, Sarajevo, um, we connected, people connect and uh, share idea or vision. Um, and I think it's very important. So I did that in Sarajevo and hopefully we'll have a TV screening and I hope many, as many people will see the movie. I think it's important. That's why we, we did it. Uh, so I don't expect a big change, but I'm a great believer in small changes and what uh, yeah. they can do and how can they affect uh, uh, different societies. So you mentioned that you, you know, there was, there was, there were offers if you bent the film narrative toward the conflict that there were funding sources available you turned down. So we do have a question from uh, uh, Larry, I think. Larry, do you want to ask your question about the funding structures? Let's see. Yep, this is Larry. And I, so I know that, you know, funding is a big part of getting any film made. So I'm interested to know how, how, how much money you raised through, through uh, crowdfunding and what your other financial sources were. Ah, thank you, Larry. Um, I don't uh, uh, recall a amount, I think 10,000 or something that, like that dollars. I'm not sure really, I'm not about crowd, crowdfunding, but I think something like that. What happened, we started the movie so quickly because we needed to follow Nujema uh, trainings and preparations. So we started with my, uh, my uh, family or my Mladen's, Mladen's, my husband and my money and my producer money. So thank you Mladen, he is here uh, uh, still. Uh, we use our own money and my producer money, she became a friend. She needed to become a friend. She, <laughs> she gave me her money also. <laughs> and she was starting her own business. So that's how we started. Uh, very with small amounts of uh, funding. And after a year and a half, uh, we got, uh, yes, I forgot, we got a camera from Al Jazeera Balkans. Al Jazeera was co-producer and they gave us a second camera and they incorporated that as a co-producer. And uh, after a year and a half, we will receive the small amount uh, of co-producer money from Al Jazeera Balkans. So all that time we were filming uh, with uh, our own funds and it was very hard. So what again helped, uh, my team worked, uh, uh, although they were not paid all the time, but they believed in the film. So mm -hmm. we, we were like filming and they were not being paid at, that, at some point because uh, they, they told me they like the uh, film, they want to finish it, and that's how we ran. And then we realized that we will need to crowdfund. And again, the same team, uh, my uh, producer, Mladen, uh, I, and a couple of friends, organized Irena Klaic, who uh, then connected me to uh, Charlotte and Carla, and to many, many small donations. You saw on the 
end of the film, like Larry said, I don't know who, who so many names were there, but they're part of my family. They helped this movie um, to see uh, light of the day. And at the end, I mean, after almost almost two years, we got funding from uh, a Croatian uh, 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 cinema fund uh, center, uh, Hrvatski audiovisual, audiovisual center. And we, with that money and the crowdfunding, we uh, covered our, co uh, you know, uh, expenses. So uh, I didn't bankrupt, but <laughs> we didn't uh, earn any money and it wasn't a point, uh, but I'm very helpful that I didn't bankrupt in that process because you, if I knew, maybe I didn't, wouldn't even start it. But because I didn't know how the process will go, I just said yes, and we <laughs> we proceed, and you know had m many amplitudes and in our uh, filming process. But I'm glad that uh, now I can smile and say, you know, at that point I couldn't, but now I can smile and say, yes, we finished it. So uh, uh, a lot of things I learned in that process. Yeah, Mladen, Mladen looked a little skeptical by some of your <laughs> optimism there. Um, Irena uh, Kleic is on the call. I don't know if you want to add anything. Irena has actually posted some data for people, especially if there are folks who are interested in, in supporting this effort. Oh, thank Irena, you, is that, Irena. Link, is that uh, link still live, Irena? Uh, that link, they're not crowdfunding anymore, but that has a history of uh, <laughs> crowdfunding. But yeah, it, it was... Um, well, Slajana and I, we, we come from the same little town in Croatia. We've known each other for, for many years. And uh, when she sent me the rough cut, I just loved it. I loved everything about it. And I know that there was a big concern that they will not be able to crowd, um, you know, crowdsource um, this uh, campaign and finish the film. So um, there was a fascinating story that I just love um, how we actually made it work and it happened in Austin, Texas. Uh, I, was, I was playing tennis one day uh, with my team and I lost to Carla, who is also on this call. And we called each other frenemies on a tennis court because she's originally from Serbia and I'm from Croatia. And that was like a fun game, but she beat me. And um, at the end of the match, uh, I, I got in touch with Charlotte, who is, again, on this call, and uh, she is a captain. And I don't know, I forgot my cell phone somewhere, and I was running around uh, looking for it, and I happened to meet her. And then she was, I was on the phone with work, and she was coming to tell me something funny. But I was on a serious phone call, and, and I just couldn't talk to her. And I said, well, you know, I'll, I'll find you. And I felt so bad, you know, that I like kind of dismissed her and she, she was so nice. Uh, so I find her sitting on the bench uh, watching a match and I sat next to her and we started talking and I, we hit it off within three seconds. Um, talking about politics and immigration. And uh, the next day I was planning to show the film Slajana's Rough Cut to my dear friends, Patty's here, my sister, um, some other friends that I knew well here in Austin that were interested. I was like, well, we're, we're going to collect as much as we can. So I got a bunch of Croatian food and drinks and sweets. And as I was talking to Charlotte, she told me about uh, Carla, who is um, a building schools for Muslim girls in Pakistan. And I just kind of connected and I was like, what are you guys doing tomorrow? So I invited them, barely knowing the women, <laughs> to my apartment. They came and within, I think, first 15 minutes of the film, Charlotte um, uh, made, a, made a payment uh, directly uh, to, the, to the account. And I remember Slajana calling me frantically saying, oh, wow, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was so funny because it was the most crucial. It was the most crucial moment of filmmaking. You know, <laughs> for me as uh, Ministry of Treasury, is most crucial. Thank you, thank you, Charlotte, for all. Thank you, everybody. But it was funny because Herzle, uh, if in German, Herr, like Mister, and uh, uh, my uh, producer called me and said, "Do you know some Mister Zelle?" Because Herr Zelle, and I said, 
I don't know, no Zella, friend or <laughs> sir or whoever. <laughs> and it was uh, Charlotte Herzeler. So yeah, and there were many, many other people who helped with, and you know, that's why there is a long uh, line <laughs> of names uh, uh, at the end of the movie. So yeah, it was very um, uh, important because uh, see how we connected in all many different ways. So as you know, it was beautiful. And my, it's Herz means heart and Herz in German is a little heart. But it was, I mean, sometimes I just do things on women. I had a feeling about Irena that was just so good. And Carla and I said, yeah, let's do it, you know? And you were absolutely amazing. I mean, the film, the whole idea, the concept, I mean, I know it's completely different now, but what we saw, it was so true and real and of so much value and so to my heart that why wouldn't I support that? It's everything I believe in, everything I believe in. You showed a woman who followed her heart, who was true to what she wanted, and she accomplished something absolutely marvelous. And the fact that you bought into that and made it available to so many people is just marvelous to me. Thank you, thank you. And Irena is right, it was meant to be, absolutely. So thank you. Uh, may I also, uh, this is Carla, but I bought Kathy Hansen's, uh, you know, hidden behind her mask there is Carla. <laughs> and. <laughs> I just wanted to say also that um, the story in and of itself is wonderful, but because, you know, uh, one of the reasons that we work with, and Kathy and I started the Hoshiar Foundation to try to help girls in a conservative, very conservative society, um, think about the possibility of a larger world and think about their bodies in a positive way. And I, I just think this film um, is, is wonderful in concept, in execution. And it was a tremendous privilege that, and it was great good fortune that I played tennis against Irena and she was very good by the way. <laughs> thank you, so thank you for that. So this is a nice sort of moment of solidarity and community just to, uh, relay a request from uh, one of the interns at, um, uh, at the Cronkite School that uh, would like to take a photograph of the screen. If anyone is uncomfortable with that, uh, now would be the time to turn off your camera, but at some point, Theodora will be snapping us on screen. Uh, we, are, <laughs> we are also recording this already, so presumably you're happy with being on screen. Um, sort of following up on this question about the funding, we, we uh, um, and it sort of links to the question of what's next for you, Slojana. If, if is there still a way that people on this call who embrace the message, um, as uh, uh, Charlotte and um, Carla ha have, um, to contribute? And also, the question that came from some folks on the call. Can how how what are the what what is the process by which it can be shared further? I know there are some limits to the distribution folks placed on you, but what 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 are, what are the ways that people can show it to other people? Oh, yes, we I'm new to uh, to this process also, uh, so um, uh, we are waiting to, uh, film to be because we have a TV screener which is a shorter like 50, uh, 57 minutes I think to be shown at Al Jazeera Balkans uh, for the first time because they're co-producers. And we are now trying to figure out the way and to see if there is any possibility for distribution out outside. So uh, hopefully, I, um, I mean, we are not like a big production and I'm an independent uh, documentarist. So we are just trying to figure out if there is an option in um, USA and in different states and continents to show it to the world. We went to different festivals uh, in uh, uh, different continents, but uh, hopefully we'll find a way to distribute it. Uh, not, don't know now yet, but uh, fingers crossed that we'll uh, 
will find somebody interested uh, to to show it on TV or in you know online channels. So it it's it's a process that I'm not familiar with and. Hopefully I don't have to learn it because I had a lot of lessons through this process. This is something that I'm bad at, you know? Uh, so I'll ask, I'm asking my producer and uh, we just uh, got a, a sales agent that will see that this options. And I, I hope as many people as can uh, will see the movie. And one, one of the things we're trying to do, um, the Malikian Center is, uh, it's one of the tragedies for me that there's all this great visual work being produced by documentarians in the Balkans. It's very hard for American educational libraries to purchase them and then have them for students. But we, uh, it's, it's one of the things we're working on and we're working with the library here. So hope before you leave, we'll work out a way that ASU can contribute uh, to purchase a copy. Um, Kevin. Kevin Jonah has another question. Do you want to go ahead with that question? Kevin, you've been very patient. Um, I was uh, just wondering, I noticed that um, in your film, instead of voicing over in English, the film used subtitles for all of it. Um, I don't really see that in most foreign documentaries. It's usually the person speaking and then someone speaks in English to translate what they're saying. So can you explain why you made that decision? Well, uh, thank you. I mean, I didn't even think about other options because for me, it was very important that you can hear uh, people, you know, it's easier to connect if it's not voicing over, especially in documentary film make, films, uh, that's how I see it. What we did for different markets, uh, you know, because I, social networks is very important for us, you know, all the graphics that you see uh, for like uh, USA, we put like English version because of course she was writing it in Bosnian. And for, uh, I think in Jordan or uh, I, I, I'm not sure that they, with, for Arabic, I think they, they're preparing it with Arabic, op, uh, Arabic language. Uh, so uh, I think it's easier to connect if you take a voice of uh, protagonists. Uh, it, it really is different to how you connect with that person. So to have like a, a subtitle, uh, for me, it's a better way for me. I, the, just how I see it. You hear it, you know, in her voice or in other voices when somebody is mad, happy. And if it's somebody is doing like the actor, then it's for me, it's not authentic enough. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's an interesting question because it's one of the claims that is made uh, that um, U.S. audiences especially uh, are impatient with subtitles. But I think uh, I, kn I know a lot of documentary filmmakers have made the same decision as you, Slajana. I'm just thinking of Honeyland that came out last year from yes. uh, North Macedonia where uh, they they use that same technique and and again I think it's part of the part of you getting to know the characters is hearing and seeing their their voices. Um, the only other so 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 you mentioned the, the getting access and I just flagged that um, Mary Mary Kate Schneider who's on the call who is the head of uh, global studies um, at a university in Maryland is is a second that's a second library interested so please. When Thank you're talking you. to distributors, make sure there's a way <laughs> they're aware that educational institutions want this. Mary Kate, I don't know if you want to say anything else because I know you've you worked in Bosnia as well. Do you want to say anything? Uh, yeah. Um, so first of all, sorry, my my lighting is a little bit. There we go. Um, so first of all, it's it's I think it's so awesome, Slajana, that you made this film. I didn't know that it existed, and I actually I had the privilege to to run with Nujima actually with Thirchani Oh, really? I, and so 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 I recognized a number of the people in the film: um, Nikjakovic, um, Bazvic, um, of course Nujima, um, and and Mirzana. So David, I know you you know Mirzana from from CLI way back when. Um, so Mirzani and Sani and, and so so many familiar faces were in this film and I had no idea when I was just I was just running with a running group in Bosnia I had no idea that there was such a backstory to 
to this wonderful woman and to this organization. Um, so I'm just thrilled that, that this film exists. And kind of from a broader perspective, so many documentaries that come out of this region focus on the war and they focus on conflict and they focus on peace building. And this, this doesn't, it focuses on kind of a human being and their story and the way that they influence other human beings. And I think that that's so important because it really serves to kind of humanize the region and it serves to humanize the people in the region, which I think is very, very important for kind of the rest of the world, the United States at all, kind of, and how it is that we perceive the Balkans. So thank you for, for doing that, because I think that that's really important. Thank you so much. It, for me, it was also, you know, and I'm grateful that you can connect. It's about us in general, people, not about where we are from. It's because we have different um, obstacles and difficulties, but I, same like Mujema, I uh, love life, you know, it can be tough, uh, we struggle, but uh, she decided to embrace it and uh, to live it. And uh, I think sometimes we forgot that and it's important to, to connect and uh, to, to find what we really want. I mean, it just took me 45, 46 years to film the first documentary. So <laughs> see, I'm a slow learner, <laughs> a starter. So thank you. So, uh, so I think we've made our way through all the questions in the chat. Um, last chance for anyone to ask a question. Otherwise, I'll just turn it over to Slajana to, and then maybe Elizabeth Blackburn to say a couple of words about the Humphrey program. But Slajana, anything else you want to leave us with? Well, yes, I hope you uh, enjoyed the movie uh, as much as we enjoyed making it. Uh, and uh, hopefully it will um, uh, inspire you in any way you feel like to um, uh, to do some little things for yourself or for somebody else. And that also uh, helped a bit understand more uh, my part of the world, not uh, in, a, a, in the way what happened in the 90s, but just to, to show who we are from, the, uh, uh, from that region. And that well, for John, for... could I just say one more thing? That, that you know, you're a channel and art comes through you and this is a beautiful piece of art that came through you and the amount of time it took doesn't matter the fact that it made it and it's such a jewel and such a beautiful thing i commend you and stay open thank you thank you thank you a lot Uh, thanks, Lajana. So, Elizabeth, you want to um, just take? Yeah, of course. Um, no, thank you, everyone, so much for attending. Thank you so much, Lajana, for, you know, like Charlotte said, this beautiful piece of work. Thank you for telling these powerful stories. Um, it is so important, and we really appreciate you all being here to, you know, to dig deeper into this and to explore. Um, I, I work at the Cronkite School. Um, I'm a program coordinator with Cronkite Global Initiatives. And, you know, Siljana is a part of a program, the, the Hubert H. Humphrey Fellows. So this year we have nine fellows and they come from around the world. And each year we receive different fellows and we're so blessed with such a fantastic group. So um, we have events throughout the year. Thank you so much to the Malikian Center for being a wonderful co-sponsor in this particular event. And we really try to have dynamic events like this. And another way, if anyone is interested for people to get involved is we have global friends. So we have people who get to know the fellows each year um, in a more social way. And so you can attend events like this, but if anyone is interested in becoming more involved with some of the Cronkite Global Initiative events and more involved with the Humphrey Fellows, we would love to connect with you um, and to continue this conversation and to help connect more people in the community with wonderful fellows like, like Slajana. Um, I'm gonna leave my email in the chat and then the registration email that everybody received also has my contact information and you can shoot me an email and you know we would love to chat more with you. And thank you so much to Keith. Thank you so much to David um, for all of your, your help and your work.
with us and we really appreciate our partnership with the Malikian Center. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth, and thank you again, Slajana. So a symbolic or literal uh, a round of applause, I think, for Slajana and this movie. And uh, tell your friends. Thank you. It was so nice talk you. Thank you for the Malikian Center and my Humphrey Fellows and, of course, the Arizona State University. I was just before that, I was in my class, as I said, like I was a good student learning a lot and uh, uh, hopefully it will take some new skills and knowledge. <laughs>